Hello, hello, and welcome to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today we'll be covering power-ups. I will be breaking these down into three categories with the hopes that by the end of this video, you will be able to make your own power-ups from scratch, or at the very least, you can copy these three power-ups for yourself. So uh, the first one will be duration. This is a power-up that when equipped, uh, you get that power-up for a certain amount of time. Um, then the quantity one, this is a power up when collected, you can only use it a number of times, so that in this case it would be one, uh, so that's only one jump. And then the last one is object oriented, this is one that when collected it alters the state of another object, in this case it will be the material of another object. Um, so let's go ahead and take each of these and break them down uh, one by one. To create any power up you will first need to start with a 3D object. This will be the item that you are collecting. So, in order to do that, you can go ahead and hit import. Uh, I have mine as an object file. In this case, I chose an arrow. Makes sense. It's a boost. You're going forward. Makes sense. So, we can import that. It will import as a static mesh. From there, we can see I already have this, but it just overrid it. From there, what you will be able to do is go into blueprints, and we can create a new blueprint class actor. We can name this uh, uh, power ups or power up duration. We can go into the blueprint class here. Put in the wrong menu. Here we go. And to start off, we want to add our mesh. So we can add static mesh, nothing to it. The first thing we will want to do before we even change what it is is change the collision to no collision. We are going to make our object disappear after we collect it, so we don't need to deal with collision at all. Uh, select our static mesh here. I have my arrow. Now I want this arrow to be uh, 90 degrees rotated, so we can hit E, rotate 90 degrees. Hello? There we go. Rotate 90 degrees. And then we can add some sort of clue, cool material uh, that gives our power-ups a little bit of a wow. This is a glowing blue. Now we can add a rotation movement. What we will want, this will be put at the 0, zero location. We will want this to be set to 90. That is a slower. This is the speed of the rotation. We want Z. That is the axis of rotation. So you can see your axes here on which axes you want to ro ro rotate around. In our case, it'll be the vertical axes. From there, because it's in the center, we will want to position our object to be in the center. Otherwise, it will rotate uh, all off-center. So we will want to offset it about that much, and then about that much. Hit Compile and Save. For quick checks, we can throw this into our world and go ahead and play our game real fast and make sure that the scale, the rotation, everything's right. If anything's wrong, go back to your viewport and alter the location or the scale or the rotation speed to fine tune what you want. From there, we can add a collision capsule. This will be what triggers our power up to begin with, hence the, the lack of need of a collision on the actual object itself. So from there, we can go into event graph and with the capsule selected, we can do add event for capsule. We can do collision and do add on collision begin overlap. Once we touch that, everything will be executed. So from here, uh, we will want to alter our third person character. If you did not follow the first tutorial, you will want to go and take a look back because from there we added a speed custom event which allows us to change the walking speed and thus make our character faster or slower, which is what we will be doing here. So, first thing we want to do is uh, get our third person character because we will be altering the speed that we have in there. So set it the other actor. From here you can get speed we will be setting the speed to three times the original amount that we have, which is 3000. From there, we also want to 
have our power up make a noise so we can do play 2d sound this will play whatever sound we want if you missed that tutorial as well i have a full sound tutorial on how you can import it use it and add it to your game i already have one so i'm going to go ahead and use it after our character has its speed boost we have its sound we will want to hide the power up itself so we are going to set the actor hidden in game we will set this to true meaning that we will hide the character from there we will want a delay this delay will be the duration of which the power up is good for so after we've given our character its boost we will want to now reduce the speed back to normal so we can grab our third person character here and we can grab speed and we can reduce this value back to its default which we have used as 1000 from there we will wait another three seconds or whatever you so choose this delay will be the delay uh, before the character can grab the power up again so you get the power up for three seconds and then you have to wait another three seconds before you can use the power up again so this is where we will set actor hidden again but we will leave it false because we want to set our actor visible so after all of this we want it so that you can only use the the power up once while it is hidden. You don't want to be able to recollect it while it is hidden. So what we will do is this will only be allowed if, aka branch, condition being is our actor hidden. So hidden, get actor hidden in game. So if our actor is hidden in the game, we will do nothing. If our actor is visible, false. We will increase the speed, play a sound, hide the boost, give the boost for three seconds, reduce the speed back to normal, wait another three seconds, and then the boost is visible again. Not only is it visible, but it's usable. So with all this set up, we should be able to uh, move this a little into place and we should Alt P. Object is, our power up is looking good, it's moving. Now we can collect it, plays a sound, increases our speed for three seconds. After that, we wait another three seconds and we can use it again. Moving on to the quantity power up, we will skip over the creation of the blueprint on the mesh and the collision caps and all that since we did it in the first one. But same idea, before we move on to what goes into the event graph, we need to do a couple of things on our third person character. So if you don't have this open, please go ahead and open it. We will want to create a variable to track the quantity of jump. So if we do jump, and this will be an integer. Uh, go ahead and compile and save so that you can see that the default is set to zero. Once set up, we can go actually to our power duration and we can copy the full setup here since it'll be fairly similar with some minor tweaks. So looking here, same idea. We want to on component begin an overlap of the capsule. We will execute this as long as the actor is visible. Moving on, we do not want to alter the speed. Instead, we want to get character movement and from there we will set a new jump velocity so set jump z velocity from here we can set a new jump velocity by default i think it's set to 700 or 500 uh, we're going to do about three times that, so we'll do the 2100. And then we will want a different jump sound. I think I have this one. Same thing, we want to set the actor hidden. But in this case, we want to not reset 
we will do that some in a different we will not make the actor revisible we want to do that in the actual third person character because we're using that quantity check tracker so there you go let's make this 10 seconds so this is all you need except for one more thing so we need a way to update the counter that we created so we will want to do is set uh, jump quantity we will go ahead and go with two you can set this to whatever you want but this will be the number of times that you can execute it um, before your power up is no more so that should be everything we need in the power up itself now everything else will be in our third person character now using the third person default we already have the enhanced input or uh, action ai for jump and we're going to go ahead and use this so when we jump now that we have that new velocity we want to get that tracker to see how many times can we jump at that higher velocity before we need to reset it so after we jump we're going to do a do once we want a do once because otherwise this will continue to uh, occur while we're jumping and we only want it to decrement our counter once. So we're going to set this up to the reset node. So once you stop jumping, it can execute again the next time we jump. So from here, we will want a branch. And our condition will be an equals. Actually, before we do that, we can just grab in our jump quantity. If this equals zero, which is the default case, then we will want to reset our character jump velocity. So true. Now it's at the bottom. Okay. So you get the character movement. Z velocity. Put that here plug this into the true node and reset it to what we had at 700 is uh, our default. So it will reset it. But if we're not, we want to decrement this jump quantity. So we want a subtraction node off of this. Throw in a spell, that would be great. We want to just subtract one from this. And then we need to get it, shift, drag, and we can do set and what we can do is just input this and we're just going to be taking your jump quantity subtracting one and setting it as our new jump quantity this will be the false node and from there everything should work um, if anything goes wrong we can go back and add a print string statement to execute anything that we missed or to check if our jump quantity is right so with all this we can hit compile and save and if all works we should be able to add our new jump power up and if all works we should be able to hit play we have our new power up we should be able to collect it and then we should be able to jump once and twice and then we should be back to normal and then we have that delay again so that after a bit it can be recollected and used again and the best part about once you have more than one power up is that you can actually combine these and jump out of the map <laughs> Whee. So for this next power, this is something that I created for uh, a completely blacked out world where I wanted to be able to not see the platforms, but when I collect this, it turns it on, kind of makes a light switch sound, and then it turns off and you can't see it no more. So let's go ahead and make this from scratch. So before we can make our object power up and the platform that goes with it, we need to go to our third person character and create a new variable. This will be a Boolean, and it will just be used to toggle the platform. So we can just do platform toggle. Once we have our variable, we'll compile, save. We can make sure that it's set to false by default, and then we can go into the actual power up itself. Uh, let's see here. So again, not going to show you how to do the capsule mesh or rotation because you shouldn't know how to do that from the first one. So if we just move into the event graph, 
same thing as the last power we can just go in and copy our capsule overlay and we can change some things so same thing we're going to want to overlap we're going to want to grab our third person character but instead of altering the speed we will be altering the uh, boolean value that we just created so platform toggle we will be setting it to true and then we're going to play our sound so let's see here so a light sound here collect light makes a light switch sound high tech character we only need one delay which will do three seconds just for visual sake and then at the end we want to set this back to false set platform toggle to false this is all we'll need for this so we can compile and save it next thing we can do is create a, another blueprint um, this is whatever object you want I just made a simple cube platform main thing is you want to set the material to something matte black something that you're gonna want the initial state to be so from there once you have that you can go into the event graph and we will actually be using the begin play and the event tick so we can delete these hide the comments and so because we'll be doing event tick we and we need to call our third person character to check that boolean value we do not want to uh, call our cast a third person every tick so we can just at the beginning of play we can do that so we can do uh, third person character and then we need to get our player character And then if you right click this, you can promote to variable. And now you have this variable that you can use and you can just call that instead of casting this. Next. So all we're going to want to do now is check, just create a little branch here. And our condition will be, so we can control drag this in. It will be to check that platform variable. So we can do a get platform form toggle plug that into here now if we're saying we want to toggle the platform that means we want to set the material to something that's bright and white and visible so I'm going to make the platform glow when we collect this so for if it's true we're going to want to set material of the cube so that's nice it's already there and you can actually copy this because you'll end up setting the cube either way, but it just depends on what. So if we want to toggle the platform visible, we will choose something bright. You can choose this material. This is an admissive material, so it'll glow. And then if it's not, we want that black that we had from earlier. So that matte black, solid black. So with this all set up, we can compile and save, and everything should be ready. So we just need to put both our power up and our platform into the scene. Drag and drop, and drag and drop. Alt P, we should be able to now run into this. It should turn nice and bright and visible, and then turn invisible. So those are your three power ups. Hopefully now you can go ahead and create your own. Um, if you do create your own, please comment it below so uh, other people can get ideas for maybe their game they're trying to build. Uh, but if not, put any questions or anything else you want to see in the comments below. And thanks for watching.